All right, we are online and off to the races. All right, here we go. Um, it's been a while. It's always a while. Um, life is busy, what can I say? Um, just have a lot going on. Summertime is crazy. It's been a while since uh, we've gotten anything completed. So tonight, hopefully, uh, we're going to finish the Sunfire Super Junior. So... Let's not waste time and get into it. Here's where we left off. We recapped the board. We recapped the power supply. Um, we were not getting output. Um, our power supply was sagging on the 13 volt side. Um, we determined that, or I determined, that this op amp here is the problem. At least I think it is. It might not be. But we're going to start there. Still haven't figured this camera out yet. but So we're going to start there. I'm going to replace this op amp. Um, I'm going to leave the uh, little rework diodes out for now. Um, the earlier revisions didn't have them anyways. Um, but we'll, we'll test it without those. Make sure that that's the problem, and then we will uh, find a way to add those back in and make it look nice. Um, so let's get started. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the proper way to remove uh, what is this an SOIC 14 something like that flat blade razor um, doesn't have to be crazy sharp. Um, you know, sharp enough to cut some pins. What we're going to do is we're going to put it right up against the side of the package. And on top of the pins, and we're just going to push and rock. Just push and rock. Not too hard. You can feel it when it starts to go through. Push and rock. We don't want to cut through the board. We're just trying to cut through the legs of the device. If your blade is too sharp, you will end up damaging the board. So you can see when you're starting to cut through and um, you know, be is that in focus? Come on, focus. Get off my hand and focus on the razor blade. But you know, keep an eye on it. You want to make sure you're cutting through the pins and not through the board. And once you get through, don't keep going because there could be traces under there. I don't remember if there are or aren't, but we don't want to have to do any more rework than we have to. Same thing on the other side. Just put it on the pins and rock it until it cuts. That side went a little easier than the other one. You could actually hear it break through to the bottom. And then just grab it and pull it off. You don't have to use any heat. You don't have to use any solder wick. You don't have to use anything. Just, you know, after you, after you cut it, it comes right off. Obviously, it's garbage at that point, but... I would much rather damage a you know dollar or two dollar part than do more damage to this board. Components can be you know pretty easily replaced. Boards are not easy to rework. So all you uh professional electronics guys out there, make sure that uh if you're not doing it that way, you start doing it that way. Then we're going to put a little solder on there and we're just going to clean up the pens. I'm just going to wipe them off. Try not to create shorts like I did just right there. Just 
Alright. Am I in camera or am I out of camera? I'm still in camera. Let me adjust this a little bit. There we go. I'm trying to work on letting everybody see what I'm doing and keeping my head out of the picture. I know I can't always do that. You know, clean your iron frequently. You just want to get the legs off. Once we get those uh, old legs off, then we can clean the pads. Get my favorite cheap soldering wick. When Radio Shack was going out of business, I cleaned out their shelves. But any any soldering wick will work. Um, I prefer actually, what is it, goot or goat or whatever it is. That's what we use at work. It's good stuff. It's got flux in it. This stuff does not have flux in it. So sometimes it's difficult, but we're going to clean the pads. Not a lot of pressure. But we're going to do a nice slow drag. And once the wick is dirty, snip it till you get a clean spot. And then go on to the next side. And these don't have to be like perfectly super clean. Just clean enough to where we can put another device on it. Again, nice and slow. Not a lot of pressure. We don't want to tear pads off. All we're doing is just taking the excess solder off. Little ISO clean it up. Now I did leave one of the reworked um, diodes in there. I will probably end up pulling that out. That's this guy right here. Surface mount. Let's see if I can get it a little closer. So yeah, that guy was left in there. I really don't know why my autofocus is not behaving. It's focused on this right now, not here, but um so this is this piece was just dropped in there and then they put it on these uh on the end of this capacitor and resistor there. So it's just an added surface mount part. Here I know what we can do. We can get our trusty magnifying glass. This thing's awesome. So yeah, you can see they just kinda scabbed it in there. It's a uh factory re rework. Uh I'm gonna leave it for now. It's not going to hurt nothing having that in there. But eventually I would like to uh, put all new diodes in there. I just don't like the way they did it at the factory. They did it the easiest way. I tend to do it a little bit more meticulous. Does it matter? No. So I stocked up on these uh, JFET op amps just because, um, you know, there's a component shortage going on right now. Um, and it's really hard to get chips and parts of any kind. They are becoming harder and harder to get. So these do not have a line on them, unfortunately. But... Uh, on the ST parts, the ST logo is by pin 1. So I'm going to line this up. And the way that I put these in here is uh, I tack one pin down, only one. And then I get the part lined up as you know perfect as I can get it. And of course it's not going to cooperate because everybody's watching. Let's see if I can 
Well, that's as far as I can zoom in. Let's see if I can prop this up a little bit with something. My messy desk that still hasn't been cleaned. I just have, I have so much going on. Get some transformer tape. That's always a good kickstand. Look at that. You can see it maybe a fraction better. Let's see if we can get it centered. Close to centered anyways. All right. So I am going to solder one pin. And I apologize that it's focusing over here. I might switch it to manual focus if I have to. We're going to do pin 7 or 8, whichever one that is. And uh, I'm really, I'm going to switch to my smaller tip. It really helps to use a pointed tip. The uh, I don't even know what the, these tips are called. Hoof, hoof tip or I don't know. They're good for a lot of things. You you you, know, you, you could use it to drag solder these, but I don't want to do that today. Sometimes that's more of a pain than it's worth. I just want to get this thing on, make sure that it's on well, and uh, keep going. So. Ignore the head if my head's in there. I just want to make sure that I'm getting this centered. And we're going to tack down one pin. Alright, we got it that time. So I have one pin down. You can see that the device is is fairly centered on the pads. I mean, it's it's pretty darn good. It has to be twisted just a tiny little bit. So I'm going to give it a little, just a tiny little nudge with my finger while I'm pushing down, and then I'm going to re-solder re that pad. And that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it without using hot air. And don't do what I did either. You shouldn't use your iron to push the parts down. <laughs> but uh, once you have uh, one corner, we're going to go and tack down the other corner. Make sure that our part is fully seated on the board, and then we're just going to go through and solder each pin. So I, I always do the next one in line. And then I come back and do the first one. And the reason is, is you want to keep your corners tacked down. While you're, uh, while you're soldering the rest of the pins in. And if you want to be a little OCD, you can hit it with a little flux. You don't have to go crazy. But just just touch each pin and make sure they're fully wetted out. Well, these pointy tips don't really um, transfer a ton of heat, so sometimes you know it, it can be an issue getting these uh, you know soldered in with really nice fillets in there, but. Uh, we're not going to worry about that today. Where are we? We are off to the side. Let me fix my camera here. All right, so we got one side down. And again, we're working on this guy here. I apologize if, again, if my head's in there. I can't even really see. I moved the camera, so hopefully... You know, it's not. You guys can actually see what the heck's going on. Let 
I'm just going through real slow. Making sure I get each pin. What I can do actually is I have a I have a different pointy tip. I have one that's a little bit less tapered. This one will transfer a little more heat. So you know if I'm worried I didn't get a good uh a good connection to the board, I can just go through and hit each one of these pins with this guy. After I throw a little flux on there. Maybe a little more flux because it doesn't seem to be flowing. One thing you don't want to do is have solder bridges, and that's what I just did right in here. So if you have a solder bridge, that's when you break out the uh, the hoof tip. These kind of tips with the little cup on the bottom of them are great for sucking out... Uh, bridged pins. Yeah, you could use wick. You need flux. You got to make sure you got a good amount of flux on there. But you can get in there with these. Man, my cables are all messed up tonight. There we go. That's better. You can go in there and get in between the pins and make sure you suck that out. And if it still isn't behaving, Bust out some more flux. Get some good flux. Goop it up. Can't have that solder ball in there. And that diode is really making it difficult. I don't know why my liquid flux is not flowing. Give it a little inspection, make sure that we have some nice nice connections to the pads and no shorts. All right, well, I'm happy with that. So, you know, depending on how you're, uh, you know, how you're soldering, what you're soldering with, you know, you can really use any of those tips. I prefer to use the pointed one when I'm working in smaller areas. Um, if there weren't a lot of other surface mount components around, I would use the uh, hoof tip and then just drag a solder ball across all the pins. Um, you know, there's there's a bunch of different ways you could do it, but the main thing is is make sure that you know all of the pins are nicely soldered down, and there's no shorts. You could use hot air if you really wanted to, but I. It's lead-free solder. The parts are usually glued to the board. It's just kind of a pain. It's 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 so much easier just to cut them off and and do them this way. And uh, it's it's safer for the board. So our op amp is on now. These op amps, um, if they are bad, and I believe I'm in part two. I went over you know, how we determine this guy was bad. But if this op amp is bad, or any of these op amps, what happens is this transformer that supplies them starts to get hot. 
and eventually this transformer will burn out because it can't supply a lot of current. When this transformer goes, you might as well ship me the amp or throw it away. Um, I have rewound these. They are not easy to rewind. It takes a lot of time and work. Um, they can be repaired, but you know you don't have to do that. If your amp is uh, having issues, don't leave it plugged into the wall. Turn it off. Get it looked at. Figure out what's going on. Um, so all right, we're at we're in a good position here. Um, I did talk about these wires. I don't like how they um, are pretty much right up against the high voltage supply. Even though they're carrying it, it just creates an opportunity for shorts. Um, I have some 3M double-sided foam tape, and I stick that down in between here, the board and the wires. So that, that gives them something soft to rub against. And I put a little piece down here, too. Just a little added protection. I think some of the amps um, have it. I, th I believe this one had it, too. It had a strip in there. But it's good to have something to keep your wires from running. Some of them have rib ribbon cables, depending on what revision the amp is. But I think we're in good shape. So we have that in. Um, let's power it up and see if it works. I don't have any of my knobs or anything on there. I don't even know where the knobs are. It's been so long since I worked on this. I'm sure they're on the desk or in a bag somewhere, but... Um, I see some screws and some washers. That's got to be them. Oh, well. I'll worry about that later. Nobody cares about knobs and washers. Those aren't even the right knobs. That guy got spares. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, let's see if it works, and then we will work on getting those uh, diodes back in. I have no clue what those diodes do. That's uh, out of my knowledge range. This is a, a maddening project. Maybe we'll get into this one day. This is one of those electronic hoverboards. The darn thing won't work. It's for my niece. I feel bad. Usually I can fix stuff like that pretty easy, but this one is a tough one. And kids don't understand. They just want their toys. All right, our power is off. We are going to plug in. We're going to go to phase zero, bypass on the frequency, and minimum on the level. I'm feeding this into a tiny little 10 inch subwoofer nowhere near as robust as the sunfire little sun i think these are eight inches These little sunfire woofers are incredible for their size puts out a lot of bass these little units you'd be surprised in a in a small to medium sized room these things really do crank out some juice all right, we're going to put our speaker in. And hopefully we'll get something out of it. I need to move my test speaker. I don't like where it's located. I think over a uh, winter break at work, I'm going to do some... Uh, some lab maintenance. All right, let's go current limited. Throw the power on. Zoom out just a little bit. I'm not going to hook up the, uh, you know, yeah, I guess I already have it out. Why not? Let's see what we get. Our little Quimot. My favorite oscilloscope for testing subwoofers. I 
Uh -oh. Got a broken test lead. That's no good. What's going on here? There we go. Not broken, just cheap in Chinese. All right, he's got a good bite, and this one is questionable. Hopefully it won't fall off and short or anything. Let's see what we get. All right. I heard a little buzz out of the woofer. I'm at 30 hertz. And I'm getting 30 hertz. And you can see I got 30 hertz. So, um, a recap and an op amp is all we needed to get this thing up and running. I don't know how much these Super Junior amps cost, but I know that after I refurbish one, I sell it for usually around 550 So not too bad. I don't know what I have into this one. Probably with time and parts, I have probably that into it, but that's okay. Whatever. At least it's not going into a landfill. And I'm not like super green or anything like that. I just hate throwing away stuff that's halfway decent and, you know, letting it go to waste. This is something that, you know, I generally would not be able to afford or I wouldn't want to buy one, put it that way. I could probably afford it, but I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on audio equipment, especially when I can get it for dirt cheap, broken, fix it, and then I have thousands of dollars worth of audio equipment. So, um, recap and JFET is uh, what allowed this one to come back. Now, usually, you know, there's something blown in the outputs or a transformer shot or, you know, these things have a lot of other different issues, but this was a somewhat easy one. I'm going to pull up the schematics. I think I have it up. Let's see. Can I share my screen right screen here we go um, if you are a member of the Carver site uh, these snippets are in the archives there um, they don't always match but this section does match what uh, I'm doing here so we just replaced U2 and then these are the diodes um, it goes between the plus and minus 13 volt supply and um, I don't know what it does. It biases or buffers or filters or something on uh, the input to the op amp. And it does it there and it does it. Let's see, that's U2, yeah. There and it does it here. So 9 and 13. So this. ECO, I'm guessing that's engineering change order, S number 792. And 792 makes this a revision B9. So they made that change in 2007. Um, this one had it on there, so I'm going to put it back in there. I don't know what any of that means. It's, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, these companies don't provide you know the repair information you know I, r I really hope that right to repair becomes a thing so you know service manuals and data sheets and all that become public information it's ridiculous to uh to buy something and have to either send it into the factory to have it refurbished for ridiculous prices or not be able to fix it yourself i i can't tolerate that but luckily there are uh disgruntled employees who uh, provide information like this to the community so <laughs> that helps everybody out so I'm going to get my diodes and these are 4148s and hopefully I have a ton of these which I should because they're used in pretty much everything And we're going to start putting them back in. So let's go back to where we were here. So you can see how they, they connected in. Um, you can pause or rewind if uh, if you need to. I am going to pull the power. 
Keep in mind these caps, the big caps, are still going to be charged. They're still going to have juice in them. Um, unplug your little 13 volt supply just as a precautionary. And let's uh, put these diodes back in. Now I know I said I was going to pull this one out. Maybe I'll leave it in. I want to see where these points are. It goes between C12 and R19. So R19 is pin 9. And C12 is going to be... I really should do a split screen on this. How do I... You know, I'm not going to set that up right now. It would be a pain in the rear. All right, what the hell, let's try it. Just because I don't want to keep bouncing back and forth for everybody. Let's see, right screen, I want to add a source. Uh, let's try picture in picture. Add a source. I'm not that good with OBS Studio yet, so just bear with me here. I think display capture. Hold on. Let me see what display my right screen is. Display 2. All right, let's try picture in picture. I never use picture in picture anyway, so... Who want, who the hell wants to look at me while we're doing this stuff? All right, we're gonna add display capture, display two. Okay. Oh, it, it keeps the aspect ratio. That kind of sucks. Where are we working at here? We're working down here. Well, I don't like that. Let's uh, let's try something else here. Let's see if I can do. Man, I wish I could do like a snippet capture. Browser media source. Create new window capture. That's the same as my display. <laughs> well, I guess it's a little bit better than display. All right, let me zoom in. And all right, so we're working here. And you can see the circuit here. All right, so we have this guy in here, and that goes between R19, which is right here, and C12. So C12 is going to be the power for that. So C12, C12 is negative 13. So that's this guy, that's D31, negative 13 in here. So now I need to find a positive 13 source and I can tack it onto that same leg. I'm going to leave that guy in there. It'll save me a step. Alright, I should have plenty of these diodes that are all nicely interlocked together so I can't use them. I need three more. Apparently I removed this from a uh, amp that I was working on because this is uh, I'll show you what it looks like when you do it. You end up with this where there you get you know diodes soldered together so that's what it's going to look like when it's installed. I'm not going to put that one in there, but... Alright, so we have 
we have D31. Let's get D32 in there next. So we need positive 13, and we got to go to R19. So we know where our spot on R19 is. I still might pull that out. That's bothering me. I think I have OCD. All right, so our other side is going to be C9. Let's see if C9 is close by. If C9 is not close by, then we can't do it. So here's C9. C9 connects to pin 4. So we got to find out which side of C9 we need. So here's C9. I'm going to guess it's the inside pin because that one looks like it has solder on it. And it is. So that's our plus 13. So what we can do is we can go from R19 to this side of C9. And that completes the one top side. So I am going to figure out how I want the diode to sit in there. And it helps to have a pair of pliers. Needle nose. So I think I'm going to have it go. Uh, the direction of the diode is important too. You got to pay attention when you're bending this, which way the stripe goes. Don't screw that up. So the stripe goes to the plus 13, so that'll be the C9 side. So I'm going to bend the lead down on the non-striped side. And I am going to snip. It doesn't need to be too tall. I'm going to snip it. We want it to clear the height of any of the other surface mount components and have a little bit of room in there. So, I don't know, maybe eighth of an inch. That sounds right. And I am going to mount it like this. I just noticed now that my camera is r is mirrored. I'm not going to change it now. I'll fix it later, but it's freaking me out when I'm looking at it. So we're going to go from there, and then we need to get over to here. So the stripe side goes to the 13. Or you could we could go this way. Yeah, maybe I'll just go over the top of it. So we know this is our minus point, and that's our plus point. Yeah, I like, I like that. So I am going to solder one side in first. And then we'll adjust the other side, but we got to get it bent. We want it to be roughly where it's going to go. And this is a lot of guessing. I know that's not a lot of fun, but these little intricate reworks like this just it's time consuming it's kind of a pain you just got to kind of pick something and roll with it and as you can see the caps are in the way so I'm trying to tweak it a little bit just so I can get my my bends right Take your time. I want these to sit in there straight. I don't want it to be, you know, crooked and look like garbage. So it looks like we don't need much of a bend, so 
I'm going to go for it and just do about a millimeter. And then we want our height to be the same, so just kind of eyeball that with your cutters. Get the height the same. So here's our first diode. And these things are going to be terribly difficult to hold on to, especially with pointed tweezers. Um, if you have some flat tweezers, uh, I would recommend getting them out. The needle nose are going to just be too bulky to uh, to hold the part in place. So yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'll zoom in. I'll give you a little bit better view. Actually, I don't th really think I need the picture in picture anymore. You can kind of kind of see where that's going to go. Oh, interesting. The picture in picture is what mirrored my camera. All right. Well, we're all learning stuff tonight. So my iron's still on. I am going to put a fresh new little solder blob in between that resistor and diode. I'm going to make sure that my non-striped side of the diode, the anode, is going to R19. And the little wing that I have, I want going to C9, which is pin 4. That's our positive, positive going in. And again, this is, this is super tedious. Like, there's nothing wonderful about this. But the amp was a Rev B9, so I think it needs to go out as a B9. I don't know what all the different changes, you know, involve. So I want to make sure that, you know, anything that I do is uh, up to snuff. So that guy's in there. And uh, we'll get my little lens and show you what happened there. So this is the, where's my tweezers? All right. So this is the diode that was in there from the factory rework. It's connected between uh, R19 and C12. This is our negative side. So we added this guy. We came up, across, over, and down to C9, which is our positive side. So that takes care of one half of the circuit. We have two diodes on. And now we have our negative, uh, negative connection here. So if for our other diode, we can tap off of there. And our positive is this leg right here. So we can connect off of that. I need to find where the other one goes. So I'll let you guys rewind. I'm not going to mirror the video again. That was annoying. So the center of these two diodes goes to pin 13. Pin 13 connects to R27 and R23. Where's R27 and 23? So R23 is way out of there. That is not an option. Uh, R23 is way up here. That's too far away. I don't want to run a line going all the way that way. Uh, so let's find R27. R72, R24. That's actually down there. 
R27 is also up there. So that's no good. Uh, another place we can hit is the far side of R28. R28 is way up here as well, so that's no good. We're going to have to go right to pin 13. I was hoping that would not be the case, but I vaguely remember um, having to do that. So let's see here. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that means this is 14. 13 is going to be this guy right here. So I will do the negative one. Actually, no, I think I will do the positive first. That should make it a little easier. So we know that this is our positive side because our cathode is pointing towards the positive and it does that on both sections of the circuit. So we need to go to pin 13. So anytime you're soldering to a pin on a device that's already seated, it, it, you know it's going to be a pain. I think I am going to put the diode horizontal. Give me the most amount of room to connect that last one up. I'm just going to put a random bend in there so I can hold it. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of judging where I want this to go. I want it to line up. And I'm kind of seeing how wide it needs to be before I bend it down. I'm going to leave, I'm not bending this one at 90. I'm going to leave a little bit of an angle on it because I want to catch the pins. or the uh, the angle of the leg coming off of that device. I mean it's not it's not beautiful but it's functional. If you run it to really be OCD, you could wrap the leads together and I mean, you can really go crazy with it, but I'm not going to do all that. I just need two two connections here. One to this pin, and one to that device. I just want to make sure there's no shorts. I believe the amp would function just fine without having that in. I... I I really don't know what that does. It'd be nice if they had some notes in there like, yeah, this prevents, you know, this from happening or prevents your woofer from exploding. I, I, anything. All right, I'm happy with the way that looks. So now we got to put a little bit of uh, solder in there. I am going to go back to the really fine tip. And this is a fairly uh fairly intricate rework. So I put a little solder ball on there. And I'm gonna carefully hold this guy with the tweezer. And I like these tweezers because I can smush them flat and it it doesn't crush the part, but I get a good grab so I can kind of articulate it a little bit, you know, however I need to do it. It's not ideal. Like, this still is extremely difficult to work with, but... 
At least it's something. All right, so I have it on there. It's not. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's on there. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to trim the lead. And solder it to this other guy. And to do that, I am going to push him underneath and then bring him back up on top. And the reason I'm doing that is so I get a little bit of pressure. I want to make sure they're touching. And I, I put a, a blob of uh, E6000 over this when I'm done. Um, they did not have that from the factory, but I feel like that just helps get a little bit better of a joint. Now, I'm not going to add more solder there. What I am going to do is I'm going to flux it. And just make sure that that lead flows onto that pin. You know, get the magnifying glass out if you have to. Make sure it's soldered on. Now it is sticking a little away from the pin, so I'm going to try and you know pull it back a little bit. I know none of you saw that move, but it, the whole device moved, and now it's touching the pin a little bit better. And you know, it, it might come loose when I put the li the other diode on there. And you can see that right there it popped a little bit. So what we can do is just keep keep adding a little bit of solder at a time just to make sure that we get that soldered in and connected. Alright. I'm comfortable with that. There's no shorts. I'll Use our little magnifying glass and get in there. So you can see there's a tiny little solder ball on there. It's enough to hold the lead. The leads are joined together right here. And then it goes down and gets its power tap from there. So we got one more. We got to go from from this line uh, here to down there where that other diode is. That's our negative. And the diode faces with the cathode going to the pin. So this one I'm just going to uh, bend down. And I'm going to mount it sideways, and I'll show you why. So you could you could just loop it and and run it diagonal, but I want all these connections to be kind of reinforced a little bit. So by um, connecting it like this, it kind of like boxes everything in. It's not perfect, but you know it's good enough. So right after the diode, we're going to put a sharp, sharp 90 in there. It doesn't connect as good as I was hoping it would. So we can do a little, uh, a little zig and a little zag. I'm just going to knock it in just a little bit and see if that makes it any better. And that, that'll that allow me to get a connection in there. can even make it a little bit 
sharper of a bend. If you screw it up, get another diode. Diodes are cheap. Alright, let's try that. That's better. So it's got a little loop in there and that'll allow me to connect it to that pin. Not ideal. I would have liked it to be a little bit cleaner, but um, I'm sure there's another 13 volt source somewhere on here. Or negative 13. I could probably find it, but we left that one uh, factory re rework in there. Actually, you know what? We might be able to just get that in there on an angle. Yep, that's what we're going to do. That little bend bend of an angle. I like it. Good enough. Drag this video on anymore over a darn diode leg. Alright, so we are going to get it connected in. And we want to be careful here. You don't want to add a ton of heat. You want just enough to join these pieces together, but you don't want to loosen up that leg that's soldered down to pin 13. So make sure they're touching. Just do quick, almost like you're TIG welding, quick little little jabs and then once that's in we can go back and clean up the uh, the line that's going to uh, that other side there and you're not going to get a nice shiny clean fillet with the leaded solder it's just uh the nature of dealing with leaded solder. So there we have it. It's not uh, it's not beautiful, but it'll definitely be functional. So let's go over this one more time. So we have our positive 13 volt supply. We're going through that diode um, into pin 13. We have the negative going through a diode to, th to pin 13. Then we have the same thing. We have positive coming through this diode and going to pin 9. And we have the negative going through this little diode that's already on the board, that surface mount, and that also goes to pin 9. So we have duplicated the factory rework that we took off before. And nobody could see that, so let's go over that again. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sometimes I forget that I'm zoomed in. I get too excited about doing the work here. So, all right, here we go. We have positive right here where my tweezers are. Positive comes off of the, the inside of C9, and it goes to the two diodes. And it goes this way to... R19, which connects to pin 9, and then it goes this way through this diode and goes down to pin 13. Then we have the negative side coming off of C12. It comes through this diode and connects to pin 13. And then we have this diode on the board that goes from negative to R19. So there's our four diodes. And those four diodes are part of the B9 rework on this guy here. This 
seven nine two. So that's D thirty five, D thirty six, and D thirty one and D thirty two. So we added those back in. So let's zoom out. and complete the SAMP. I think I need the kickstand. All right, we are going to put our power supply back in. Definitely make sure you put those diodes in the right way too, because if you don't, you're just going to be passing voltage through them. I mean it looks like those are blocking diodes of some kind. I, I, I honestly don't know what they do but because um, that's a sine wave coming into that. I I have no idea what those do. Maybe it just cleans up the signal somehow. Some sort of filter. I don't know. If you're an electrical engineer and you know what those diodes do, please tell me. I would love to learn that. I can fix things, but I don't know all this stuff. I'm trying to learn. I'm good at troubleshooting. Not that good at... Uh, understanding all this and I don't think I would be able to find a circuit like that online or if I did at least it wouldn't be the right one so okay we have let's put our diodes away keep our mess clean these diodes that I reworked are going to go in the garbage Diodes are back where they belong. So we have our input hooked up. We have our speaker hooked up. We do not have power. And we do not have our little baby scope hooked up. So let's get scope in there, boot them up. Zoom out a little bit. See how mad we can make the wife by cranking up this woofer. What time is it? Oh, it's only 12.14. She won't be too mad. This would be like a level, level three rage screaming. Let's see what we got. We have nothing because there's no power hooked up. Let's try that again. This time we're going to give power. Be careful. Don't touch the capacitors. They're hot, you know. Don't shock yourself. All right. I heard it power on. These things always make a weird noise the first time they get some juice. Uh, we have our status LED back here. Um, it's glowing. And let's give it some volume. There it is. No noticeable difference from what I saw before. I mean, I'm putting uh, 30 kilo or I'm sorry, 30 hertz into it. Um, this says I'm giving it 31.9. If I put some more samples on the screen, it'll probably calculate that a little better. 30.54 Let's see here. I'm surprised if I go to 10 mill or 5 milliseconds it See 20 milliseconds. Then 50. If I go to 50 it doesn't trigger. I don't know why.
It says it's reading right around 30 hertz, but I can't get a good... Uh, I guess it's a limitation of these small scopes. Doesn't uh oh, I'm moving the waveform, not my trigger point. Maybe that's part of the reason. Let's try that. Nope. Trigger. Rising edge. Auto. I can tell that I uh there we go. There's fine and coarse adjustments. It still won't trigger. Cheap scope doesn't like uh fast waveforms, so we'll slow it down. Twenty milliseconds seems to be pretty good. It's accurate enough. Thirty point five four nine hertz. It's got a really nice waveform. Uh, you can see the phase adjustment is working. The waveform is moving. There's no reference, so you just got to observe that it bounces back and forth a little bit. Um, let's change our frequency. Fifty hertz is reading pretty much dead on. Crank it down. Let's go twenty hertz. We have twenty hertz. That's kind of interesting. I don't know why it's freaking out at twenty hertz. Could be because my Let's go to full power. Not current limited. 20 hertz does not look healthy. I don't know if that's because of the little scope. Nope. Interesting. This thing should be able to, it could be because the woofer doesn't have enough, put enough load on the amp. I must say I'm surprised by that. 30 hertz looks and sounds good. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put the load, the dummy load on there, the silent speaker. See what's going on. I um I did not like that uh the way that looked at 20 hertz. Maybe there's something else wrong with this. Which is weird. You would think that it, if it's working at uh you know higher frequencies, the lower frequency should be fine, but maybe um maybe something's something's up. So we are going into a four ohm load. And I will hook the little scope up. Unusual behavior, yeah. That, I mean, that that should go way down below 20 hertz and still be playing something. Volume is down. We're going to go straight to full power. 55 hertz. 
and I can really, you know, give it the juice now. 55 hertz is playing pretty good. The unfortunate thing is, is I can't hear what's going on, but I can visually see it. So let's dial it down. So I'm at 20, 24, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to lose my frequency when it goes, you know, sub 20 hertz. That, that, yeah, that ain't right. Interesting. Never saw, um, never saw a problem like this before. Let's go to 40. And I'm going to crank it up, see if it starts freaking out. Uh, amp cut off. So they will go into protection mode. Which means I got to kill power and cycle it back. Now we're dead. I don't know what I did. I didn't hear any pops or bangs or anything. I'll just let it chill for a minute. Before I'm loading, cranking the volume at a uh, fixed frequency input is fairly stressful on an amp. I am uh I am not sure why the lower frequencies are not behaving though. I've I've uh this is new. I've never seen this before. It definitely shouldn't get all distorted when it goes that low. Let's see if we can get this thing back on. So I have no power. I know what happened. I blew the main fuse. Power is cut off. I blew the fuse. I made it angry. Fuse is toasted. Make sure it was the right fuse. Four amp it was. So yeah, I popped a fuse. Gave it a little bit too much juice. Luckily I have a bunch of replacement fuses. Hopefully in four amps. I wish they didn't put these numbers in microscopic letters so I could actually read them. Bear with me, I gotta get the magnifying glass out. I'm getting old. Seven amps, that's no good, that's too high. Might not have any four amps. I might have to go steal it out of something. Two amps. I'm sure I have another one of these amps somewhere. But I'll just have to be careful that I don't blow it. Six and a quarter. Seven and a half. I could put a larger fuse in there, but what I don't want to happen is uh, 
this thing to grenade on itself and you know blow the outputs that would be a, a bad day oh I'm not going to uh I'm not going to rip through everything I have to try and find an amp or a fuse. And we'll have to order some fuses. Oh, don't do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to put a 7 amp fuse in there. Do not do this at home. I am only doing this because I need this amp to come back on so I can find the problem. And I am going to only run current limited off my supply. So the only reason I'm doing that is because I don't have the right fuse. Uh oh. That's not good. So I turned the power on and as soon as I turned it on I went to full current limit. I'm going to disconnect one leg of my speaker. Make sure it doesn't short out to nothing and try going current limit again. Okay, the amp did come on. I have standby, so now I'm going to shut it off again. Volume is down. Click it on. As um, soon as I power it on, I'm getting full draw. So we definitely, when we blew that fuse, we broke something. I'm, I don't think it's my rework up here. Keep in mind, these caps are hot. I'm just checking some of the lower voltage components for, for heat. Um, my output fuses still look good. Those don't appear to be blown. Um, it's possible I did kill one of the outputs. I really hope I didn't. When I don't have a load it comes on and goes into standby. When I do have a load, it freaks out and wants to die. We're at 40 hertz going in. Let's try power not again. Current limited. I'm going to give it very, very slow volume. Okay. So we hit, we're back to functioning. Um, the 4 ohm load is definitely taxing the amp. Yeah, it's uh, it's going into current limit. Let's go back to our speaker. Speakers are good. We can blow up speakers. 4 ohms is a little much for this guy. It did not like that. We still need to find out why um, we're not getting our good low frequency response. I'm going to you know, check, double check all my caps and then I'm going to have to start tracing the signal path to see where it's getting uh, degraded at. Current limit. And we should be able to still see this with the speaker because it was doing it at uh, lower volumes. Let's swap these, put the red one there. All right. There we go. We have our audio signal.
it looks very clean here you know there's there's nothing that says that this is uh not functioning properly it's a nice sine wave nothing wrong at all thirty four hertz it still looks good thirty hertz it's good twenty seven twenty five so at low volume at low low frequency it looks okay. When you increase the volume, it starts to get, let's go way down, let's go to 10 hertz. <laughs> That's, that, it, that, that ain't 10 hertz. I don't know if that's a limitation of the amp. I got to I would think that these should be able to do That's 15 hertz. Looks like somebody vomited on my screen. Even at low frequencies it's not good. Let's go to 20. So 20 is where it starts looking really bad. Only one thing to do. We got to trace it. So I am going to skip over some of this. And try to uh, look right before and after I did the rework on uh, on that op amp. Maybe something on there is not functioning properly. Actually, it looks like one of my diodes is in backwards. Maybe not though. Both lines point to the positive side. Both. Both cathodes point to the positive. Both anodes point. No, my diodes are correct. At least they appear to be. Let me, uh, bust out the probe let's start seeing what the heck's going on let's see if we can find where the issue lies weird totally totally weird I don't understand why at higher frequency levels I don't have any issues and at lower frequency levels it's bad really bad I need an alligator clip I instantly regret not bringing my caffeinated beverage down here now All right, let's see what we got going on here. We need to extend our ground. Ground is going to so keep in mind we're gonna be poking around on a live amp. There's nothing.
Nothing good about that. All right. Let's uh get a baseline. Low volume, it looks nice. Loud volume, it looks really bad. So we need to see if the amp is the issue, or, or if the preamp is the issue, or the actual amplifier is the issue. And I know this is a, a terrible angle, but um, I'm just going to step through what I'm testing. So I'm following the path of the audio, and it goes through the FET that we just worked on. It goes out of pin 8. Um, pin 8 is the first output, and pin 8 I cannot reach. Pin 8 goes to R18. So we should be able to check on both sides of R18 if we can find that. And... R18 also connects to R20. So we can go between R18 and 20, which is up here, very carefully. And see what we got. So if we go to R20, it could be a blown resistor too. If we go to R20, even with no volume, I'm getting... some signal. It doesn't look doesn't look nice, but so I'm gonna put my probe on divide by ten. Go to go to five volts. Let's see what that looks like. So that it, not a very nice waveform um, coming out of uh, that rework that we did. So that leads me to believe that something's up. One of the diodes is bad. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. That's uh, it's not good. Whatever it is, we can check pin one. Pin 1 should have some uh, audio coming out of it. Again, it's it's really ugly at 20 hertz. It's Okay, this is interesting. It's actually picking up line line voltage. It's picking up a 60 hertz overlay. I should not have 60 hertz on uh, on pin 1. So I'm going to check the polarity of my caps in this area. Make sure I didn't goof. Those all look good. So that all looks pretty good. What is uh what is causing this? Maybe one of my diodes is wrong. Replaced it with the wrong value, that's possible. Something got slipped in the bag that wasn't supposed to be in there. And I know it's hard to see them. Uh the other thing I can do is I can start taking that out of there and seeing if that uh, helps clean it up. I'm not quite sure. Uh, you know, just for the heck of it, I'm going to check my power supplies. See what the power supplies look like. So we know that this is should be plus 13. And we're not going to get a clean read on the power supply coming out of uh, the speaker. We need a ground reference. Um, here's our power coming in plus minus and ground. I'm going to stay on the audio for now. Um, 
I want to find a good a good negative reference. Let me I don't know. They don't have these labeled either. I don't know which one is positive and which one is negative. Um, I should be able to get audio ground. Let's see. I think they, they do use two different grounds on there. Yes, there is isolation, so that is not going to fly. Another good reason to have a battery-powered scope, so you're not blowing anything up, crossing over isolation barriers. I need... There we go. There's a little thing right here that says scope ground. If only that was meant to hook up an oscilloscope to, to trace signals. Let's try this again. Now we can look at the audio path. So I'm going to go back to 1x on my probe. Alright, we can see that off of pin 1, clean sine wave. When I'm on pin 1 looks good so that's not the issue so that means that pin 8 is automatically good but we'll just look at him anyways pin 8 looks good okay so now we gotta go to where the phasing pot hooks up that is U2 uh, the output is pin 7 actually that was pin 7 we just looked at Pin 7 looks good. Not pin 7 on there. So far our diode rework's looking good. Um, from there we have to go to um, our volume controls. Our volume controls go to uh, U U1 pin 1. Where is U1? U1 is buried way down in here. Where I'm probably going to struggle to probe it. Let's try anyways. U1 could also be bad. This is super sensitive in here. Does that connect to anything else? Let's see, R14 and R15. trying to find an easier place to get to U1. Pins 1 and 2 are uh, feedback. I guess it goes to the pot. And here's the pot. So pin 1 connects where the pin or where C8 and see RP3 well oh, let's see what we have on the pot we'll check the both sides of the pot so clean output there there's our volume control that looks pretty clean and we're not going to see anything on that because it's ground so going into our volume control, we have good, good, clean signal. Where do we go from there? From volume control, we go to U1 pin 7. There is no pin 7 on. Oh, yeah, there, it's an 8-pin device. That goes to R7, which is feedback. Alright, I can get there. 
with our volume pot down we should not see anything there that's normal all right it's starting to look ugly coming off of R7 when I turn the volume up let's see the other side of R7 nothing that's feedback so we shouldn't get so let's check R5 R5 is what feeds that guy. So we have two diodes there. Could be one of those diodes. Let's see. R5, I'm not getting anything. We're clean going into R5. That's this side. Going out of R5, maybe it was just a little dirty. So going R5 does not look good. Um, these two diodes are 4148s. Um, they go to ground. So our signal feeding into R5 does not look good. We're feeding through R5. That's our first gain stage, is what the sheet says. Um, so if we have garbage going in, we're going to get garbage going out. That still doesn't mean that the op amp isn't bad, but it looks like... I'm going to lower my voltage down a little bit. Let's go to 1 volt. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. But it does start to get freaked out and clip a little bit. So I'm wondering if one of these diodes is bad. All right, let's power down. Let's drain our main caps. Make sure you turn the power off. Don't be stupid. Perfect example of why you drain your caps. Almost melted my probe there. Definitely made the board dirty. Now th this is fed into a transformer. So um, I'm not feeding it into a dead short. It did draw a, uh, an arc when I pulled away, but it didn't do any damage to the board. Just a little dirty. Make sure your power's off. Make sure your caps are drained. Make sure you have a cap draining device. It's much better to uh, smoke a probe than it is to smoke yourself. Alright, we're drained. Um, let's measure this resistor. I am measuring R5. I am measuring it in circuit too, so bear in mind that it might not give me the reading I want. It's reading 1.769K. It is supposed to be 1.8. R5 is good. Not the problem. Let's check our diodes. D1.
Right, try it again. Let's check our diodes here. D1. 0 0.53 6 volts in one direction. 0.54 in another. That seems about right because it's in parallel with this guy. I don't think our diodes are the problem. Um, if they were shorted, they would be reading, you know, zero volts. Let's check R6. R6 should be... R6 should be 150K. And that goes across the diodes. Alright, I'm not getting a good reading there. R6 I'm reading 1.769K, which is the same as R5 is reading. Which is over here. I am not quite sure why that would read the same as R5. It's connected to R5 on one side. And that goes through a pot to ground. Let's turn our volume all the way down and try again. R5. 1.77. R6, 10K. R6 should be 150K. I know I'm reading back through R6 because they both go to ground. One goes through the pot. I'm going to say it's not that resistor, or if it is that resistor, it doesn't matter. That is probably not our issue. That means that our issue is either the op amp or something downstream from the op amp. So the op amp drives another circuit, which I don't understand. It's a uh, transistor. Okay, so that's the, it's a pull-up for the opto-isolator. It drops through R2 and R3, some big resistors, half watts. I don't know where those are. They're here. Let's uh, measure those just for the heck of it. So... 2-1K is in parallel, and I'm reading 492. That's about right. Um, Q1. Q1 looks like a soft start circuit. Charges a capacitor. And then it turns on. C4 could be part of the issue. I replaced all these caps, though. I'm just verifying that the values are correct. These are polarized. 22 microfarads. C3 is polarized. 220. I highly doubt it's the caps. I, I, I really don't think that... Uh oh, wait. Here's a problem. Wait, no. Never mind. Never mind, the positive for this cap is here, positive for that one is there, 
all the caps are right they face the negatives are all facing that way what's this R4 R4 110 ohm Hundred and ten ohm. R four is good. R seven, which is piggybacked with an eleven K. So then this <laughs> Sorry about that. In this version, they do not have that rework on there. I just have an 11K. There's a note on there that there should be another resistor sitting on top of it. Ten point nine three K that that is good. R seven is good. R eleven should be one K. Might as well just measure everything. One K. Um I do have thirteen volts going or showing to go into a uh, voltage regulator. Let's um Let's check all our voltages. See what we got. I'm going to check them on the scope. Um, I don't think scope ground and audio ground are the same. We are going to find out. So it's saying they are. Let's see what it is in ohms. I don't trust every beep I get because some of these caps hold a charge. Okay, so that scope ground is the same as the 1 plus minus 13 volt supply. I am going to check out the power supply. So we have the transformer auxiliary winding, which comes into here. Then it goes through some diodes. Then it goes through U3. And we should get plus minus 13 volts. Let's see what our supplies look like. We'll put it on 5 volts. It should jump up 3 divisions. Let's see what that looks like. Um, we should get AC coming in to our jack. Then it goes through D27 and 28 to get rectified. Or no, those diodes are over here. Then it goes through, through the jack rectified and goes into P1, pin 1. So pin 1 should be unregulated. Pin 3 should be 13 volts. So we should have 13 volts on pin 3 of U3. Let's see what we get. All right, we're safe. All right. It's weird, I can't turn the volume down. All right, it's down. So it's shown we got 11.96, so we got 12 volts. It's pretty clean. It's a volt off, but this data sheet could be a volt off too. Now if I want to find negative 13, that should be on D3. And 
it's the side of D3 that I can't get to. Where else does it connect? That is pin 1 on J1. Let's see if we can stick something down in there and get a connection on it. I need a connection. Let's try this. Stick my little pin probe down on there. So that should be the red lead. Should be my minus. picking up noise from me. Pin 3 we have a very clean 11 volts. For our negative 13 we should be at our ground which we are and J1 pin 1, J1 pin 1, red lead. I am not showing negative voltage. That is concerning. Let's try J1 pin 2. Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. Pin 1 is the black lead. They have them backwards. But it is showing negative 13 point. Negative 13.3. There it is. Just put it on the bottom of the screen. So there's our zero voltage, and we're seeing 60 hertz noise because I'm touching the leads. Negative 13.3. Positive 12. These aren't precision regulators either. But the power supplies are fairly clean. I don't see any garbage on the su at least that supply. Um, there is a plus minus 12 volt, but that does not. Feed the part of the section that or circuit we're looking at, so we don't need to worry about that. The 12 volt only comes on the opposite side of the op amp, so. If we look at pin 1 on U4, which is the input, before we hit the isolated side, and we give some volume, that's why it sounds like crap. So what is causing that? to fall on its face. Could be C3. C3 could be a bad cap. Um, I mean it looks good. Looks good going into the volume control. Looks good coming out of the volume control. So up till R5 we look good. After R5, we don't look good. I don't think the opto isolator is the problem. Um, a quick and dirty test would be to bypass that and just feed the audio signal into the other side of R4. I'm not going to do that. Our diode work seems to be pretty good. Um, it's not that, so it's either U1 is defective or some of the circuitry that is involved with U1 is defective. I could, if I lift R4, the resistor in there, I can isolate the second half of the circuit if Q1 isn't turning on, that that wouldn't alter. So going into the op amp is where we're running into problems, the TL072 op amp. I 
let's see, let's hit R5 again. So on one side of R5. I'm going to go, e well, I'm at 20 hertz. Let's go down to 10 hertz. Clean. Other side. Dirty. So it has to be D1, D2, or the op amp. There's really nothing else that could be pulling that out of whack. The feedback from that goes to pin 6. I don't think that's the case. D1 and D2 seem to measure okay. I don't think it's them. Um, I'm going to power down again. This time make sure it's powered down. Discharge again. <laughs> 